Well, just start with some uh, some team news, Jay. Any any injuries picked up? Anybody yet back and available who hasn't been available to you so far? Uh, we've got Maxi Aimer back in the squad. Obviously, he was in the squad uh, the other night, but he's got a body of training in now. A couple of days more training, which we wanted to see. Just had a bit of an issue with his shoulder. Uh, Joe Day's uh, passed the uh, concussion protocol, so he'll come back into the match day squad. I've, obviously, I haven't missed it um, last time out against uh, Burton Albion. Um, and no, I think I think apart from that, it's pretty much the same. Um, so yeah, we had a, a reserve game on on Wednesday, and young Zane Walker and, and Pablo Martinez, who had not seen before, he wasn't training with the first team, kind of impressed me. So we brought them across with the first team group. Obviously, Zane was there before. Pablo, we did, we've only just uh, discovered. So we're still on a journey of discovery through, throughout the club. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's a you know, a, a, a group that's keen to put right, you know, the, the the result the other night, albeit, you know, first half with 11 players, performance or the, or the, the foundation of a performance was there. And, you know, I haven't watched the, the, the dismissal back. I, I think it's even harsher. You know, there's a ball on a cone not far away. It's not like, you know, we, we had a multi-ball system as, as everyone has now with the COVID uh, kind of protocols in place. So. It wasn't, as I say, like it was kicked into the stand and it was going to be a couple of minutes before the ball was retrieved. You know, the ball was kicked to the edge of the pitch into the advertising hall where there was uh, multiple balls. So, um, yeah, we have, we can't dwell on it too long because it's gone now. I've, I've, I've complained to Mike Jones, you know, I've spoke to Mike, who's, who's the head of the referees, about, you know, the decision that's given against Wigan where, you know, he gives a free kick against Jonah, the referee. And if you watch it, the replay back, the referee's blind side of the opposition player, doesn't see the incident, guesses at it, gives a free kick out wide. It's then taken from the wrong place and subsequently, you know, they, they score from it. Um, Shrewsbury's goal, you know, there's a push on, on George Williams in the build-up. Uh, referee doesn't give that, they score from that. And then Joe Day's kicked in the face by the opposition player, knocked unconscious, uh, and they were given a corner. So, you know, you add them to the Burton incident and... You know, the penalty on Brandon before the counter-attack, for me, is a stone wall that doesn't give it. The counter-attack comes, Jordy heads it out, Luke kicks into the Horden, we're down to 10. And a game that we would be very, very uh, disappointed to lose with 11 players, we end up losing a key encounter. So I spoke about, about the Ep refereeing on Tuesday night, and you're hoping at some point it corrects itself. But, you know, for, for, for the first three games at, uh, at Rovers, you know, you... You, you can't be happy with the level of officials because it's not the players who are deciding games, it, it's officials, and, and that should never ever be the case in football. It should be decided on players' ability. And, and is that something you can use? Obviously, you make your point trying to, to, to get the FA to look at it, but within the squad, that sense of sort of injustice, is that something that you can use to sort of, you know, um, bond them even closer together? No, no, I, I think the, the, the guys are, you know, they're, they're obviously not, you know, sulking about it. It's more me highlighting it as a manager because... This, this is how important, you know, tiny decisions for referees and as I say, them being part-time and maybe, you know, not having the same accountability as the full-time guys um, does make it a little bit different because, you know, you you have to second-guess that. You know, you've got a, prof a, a group of, you know, professional clubs with a lot at stake being refereed by, by part-time guys. It just shouldn't happen. Um, there's too much at stake for... Uh, you know those decisions now that could be taken by the guys had a tough day at work and he's got to get on the motorway and get to a game I, you know it just shouldn't happen um and I've, I, it's not the first time i've spoken about it. I've, I've been vocal about this in in in, in uh, previous years at, at clubs um because you know all teams are working really really hard and as i say if it, it should be down to ability it should be down to the, the the capability of the team to perform on the day not the whim of um, a, a part-time official and the difficult to speak to, the, the very, very difficult, you know, the accountability. I've texted Mike Jones, the, the three incidents, saying, look, can we have a decent ref for SAP, please? Because at, at this moment, I've had three refs at, 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 at Rovers and every single one of them has affected the game. Can I just have a referee who just allows the players and the players' ability to um, to, to be the deciding outcome of, of the result of, of, of our game? Um, so, you know, as always, they'll write back to you, the PG, MOL, they'll, they'll, they'll say he's made a mistake here after we've 
um, sat down with them and, and we've gone through the game because they have all referees assessors you know and I get I'll get a letter in three weeks uh, telling me that what I know to be true what's happening in the game a mistake has uh, been made but it serves no purpose because the points are long gone the momentum's long gone and that referee sails off into you know the the, the, the next league uh, game um, without any accountability um, and it, it is a frustrating straight part of the game um, and something I know I'm going to have to get my head around and I don't really want to be yelping and moaning about it because it distracts from uh, focusing on the team but I feel if I don't say anything you know if it, if you raise your voice on the sideline or you, you you get aggressive on the sideline, you get fined, you get banned from the touchline. Um, if you protest too uh, vehemently, you know the the fourth official gives you a yellow card now, and again it leads you down a ban and a, and and disciplinary stuff for for managers and coaching staff. And you know how are we meant to communicate, um, you know the the issues we're seeing, and again. The only way I can see for it to be better, and not that it's any better at the in the Premier League level with VAR and full-time referees, but the only way I can see for it to be better is if we make these guys full-time. You know, we have a, a football pyramid of referees so that the cream does rise to the top and we don't get these um, unaccountable moments for from referees who um, are deciding outcomes of, of very, very important um, promotion and relegation issues in, in all divisions. Okay, and uh, and then just on uh, on Hull this weekend, um, obviously second in the table, going pretty well. Um, it, I know that when you're up at, at Fleetwood, you had a, a few issues with uh, with them in the, uh, the the game between you two. Is that all sort of done and dusted now? Yeah, look for for, for us, we've always been uh, competing, even when Grant and uh, and the guys were at were at, were at Doncaster. We'd we'd um, you know we were kind of competing with them in that division. They've, they've subsequently gone to Hull and. Um, they knocked us out of the FA Cup this year, where where we played a similar side to what we'd played at um, at, at the previous game, where we we'd beaten them in the league four uh, one. I think it was live on on Sky on a Friday night with a very very understrength team. So, you know, somebody I've had good success against. Uh, we beat them three nil when they were at three nil and four nil when they were at Doncaster uh, the year before they went to Charlton and obviously uh, sorry Charlton um, Hull and went into the Championship. Um, so. We didn't play them that championship year. Then obviously they've come back down into League One with with Hull, and as 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 yet in the league, you know we've we've had um, as I say three nil, four nil, and four one. We then rolled out the same team, which included youngsters for the FA Cup, because there's not really any revenue in it for for a club like Fleetwood. And, and tactically, you know I was keen to see how how Grant would adjust based on you know the fact that we scored ten and and conceded one against him in, in league performances and you know he, he switched to a different system uh, we stayed the same system because you know I knew I'd be coming with a, a slightly dif- different tactical outlook for when we were going to come, come back and play them in the in the league at that time a fleet would have thought it was going to be a, a six pointed in terms of getting promoted out the division you know a new, a new hole were going to be a strong side this this year based on their budget based on you know the fact that they were in the Premier League a couple of years ago and they've still got a, a really good infrastructure uh, they'd taken arguably our best player off us last season in Louis Coyle, who, who who was initially not getting in the team, but as I've seen now, you know his his his, his daily habits have, have not only got him in the team, but it looks like he's he's become the the, the, kind, the kind of captain and the club captain, um, which again is a testament to him as a professional. You know he was outstanding for us at, at Fleetwood, and it, that you know he, he came to me and said, look, you know, Hull's my hometown club, and. You know, we couldn't really stand in the boys' way. We were disappointed to lose them, and it was tough to replace uh, Louis, and not only as a player but as a as a lad. And um, you know, we really um, had a tough time trying to find, you know, that player at Fleetwood. And as I say, he's gone into Hull and become their captain. And um, obviously, for the game, you know, our friendship and and our closeness will be put. Uh, to one side, uh, but obviously after the game it would be great to see him because you know he's one of the one of the lads that you know we've had on our journey with us, and and again a huge sign of our success so far because you know that's the job is to get players up the food chain, you know get players improving, getting better, and and getting you know bigger moves to to bigger clubs, especially when you're at you know clubs like you know Fleetwood Town. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a game we always look forward to because you know they're the top side and. You know, you kind of go in with the freedom of they're going to be nervy because 
you know, you've got promotion places. There's a lot of teams competing at the top, and and Hull have to get promoted on their budget. You know, if they don't get promoted, it's 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 it'll be a bad season for them. So, um, you know, for us, we've got to cease upon that that little bit of pressure. Um, we've obviously got our own pressure in terms of we need to get winning to get away from the kind of bottom four trapdoor in in this division. Um, but I think when everyone looks at the the kind of fixture list and you look at the sides that are going to you know be fighting for promotion away from home it's not you know usually one that you expect to win uh, but I feel we've got this different feeling and, and look right from the get-go I think we you know we should attack Hull um, the, the difficulty we've got is you know Brandon Hanlon hasn't trained for the last couple of days may not well be fit and, and you know we don't have a like for like kind of replacement and, and tactically what, what you can do with Brandon in the number nine um, and off the sides of that it is slightly different from what we have to do with other players so we'll have to assess the, the bodies this morning um, I did say last week against Shrewsbury Bram was touch and go he's managing an ongoing issue and credit to the boy you know he's probably playing on 80% capacity at the minute um, and we've got to be careful about what we do with them for you know because the games are just coming thick and fast. It's not like we're going to get a period where we can get a breather into them at any point. And if he breaks down, um, it it would severely decrease you know um, the options that we we would have in 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 an attacking uh, uh, capacity.